I honestly foresee people getting on tour buses and touring Northern California uh, for cannabis, much like they do the Napa Valley now for wine. Hey, this is Uncle Stoner here with Reverend Eddie Leff. How does it feel? I know there's a lot of controversy here on this Prop 64 pass and all, but how does it feel coming back to the state where they busted you for growing medical cannabis and now it's recreational here? How does that feel? Well, um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't read Prop 64 in its entirety, but it appears to me that it's set up for big corporations to come in and take over the, the movement. Uh, as I said earlier, there's room for everybody in this, but I don't think that, that companies like Scott's uh, should be able to come in and, and just dominate it. Uh, my personal opinion is is that the farm should be limited to no more than, than five or ten acres per grower. And if we do that, that will keep the corporate giants out of it. Uh, I know going to a, uh, alcohol as an example, you've got Budweiser and, and Coors and all of the other big players and there's thousands of small breweries all over the United States that are that are making a, a dollar or two and getting by and managing to uh, expand their businesses each year. And I honestly foresee that California in the next five to ten years will become a mecca for that same type of setup. I honestly foresee people getting on tour buses and touring Northern California uh, for cannabis, much like they do the Napa Valley now for wine. Uh, it's certainly something that should be looked into, and it, it's certainly something that should be done and enjoyed. And I believe there's a lot of room for micro growers out there. Now, after you get out of this halfway house, what is your next step, or what is your next project? Uh, in all honesty, I really don't know exactly what I'll do next. What my ultimate short and long-term goal is is to unite this movement until we're united we're screwed that's right. and uh, that's what I'll be working on is trying to get all the players on the same team because this plan is supposed to bring us together that's what it's meant and been put on this planet for you the hill is as a nation our spirit our body and everything and that's why I think that you represent and that's why a lot of people follow you and understand what you're preaching well if you look back historically, and I'm not talking a bunch of hippies out of the 60s, if you go back 150, 200 years, back to when National Geographic and, and the British uh, um, people sent out these expeditions to all of these different uh, locations, and they discovered all these lost civilizations, they found cannabis in three places and they found it in every civilization they discovered. And the three places they found it was the healing centers, the religious centers, and where the royalty hang out. And if you look at the history of the, can of the Catholic Church, for example, uh, they used cannabis up until the 1100s, where Pope Pius uh, outlawed it. And what he did is he said that, that it had to be outlawed because women were using it to take men away from the church. And I found that kind of funny because he didn't say anything about taking them away from Jah or God. He said they were taking them away from the church. And when you realize the history of this plant, and when you realize that literally millions of people around the world survived on this plant, lived on it, not only as, as a clothing source or, or a building source, but as a food source and as a medicine, uh, the use of this plant, we've barely scratched the surface. And until we're able to use hemp as a, an industrial product and marijuana or cannabis uh, as a healing uh, medicine, and if you be honest, an intoxicant, uh, I'll tell you, I, I was an alcoholic for years. and. I made such a fool of myself so many times it wasn't funny. I woke up so many times not knowing where I had been or what I was doing. It wasn't funny. 
not once have I even approached those lows with marijuana. I've always been in control. I've always known who I was, and I've always known what I was doing. And I think once the truth of this beautiful plant gets out there, the rest of the world will see it and understand it. So. Thank you, brother. I love you. And back in the day when I got the original Jack Herrera's, and I think they were either K2s or P2 clones from you. Little Brandon was in the truck. You play on, and I got got them back in the day from you, and, I, and things turned out wonderful. So I appreciate you, and appreciate everything you've done for this movement, and that you can then continue doing for this movement. If you don't know who this man is, check him out. Listen to what he has to say, because he makes sense. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Future will rely on you.